Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the sixth video in IB Biology Topic 6, Human Physiology, where we will be looking at homeostasis and the key hormones, insulin and glucagon, thyroxin, leptin and melatonin. Homeostasis is a term you should be familiar with from our IB Biology Topic 1 video series. But as a reminder, it is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. It can relate to several properties, for example, water balance, glucose concentration, or metabolic rate. For your exam, you need to know how several key hormones enact their respective homeostatic mechanisms. Let's start by looking at the regulation of blood glucose. In the first video of our IB Biology Topic 6 video series, we discussed the secretion of amylase, lipases, and proteases by the pancreas. However, our body's blood glucose concentration is also regulated by the pancreas through a further two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Let's take a closer look. The secretion of digestive enzymes by the pancreas is termed its exocrine function, whilst the endocrine function relates to the secretion of insulin and glucagon from areas known as islets of Langerhans. Within these areas, there are two types of cells, alpha and beta. When blood glucose concentration rises, beta cells secrete insulin. It works to increase glucose uptake by skeletal muscle and liver cells, converting it to glycogen, the storage form of glucose. Doing so lowers blood glucose concentration. When blood glucose concentration drops, alpha cells secrete glucagon. It does the opposite of insulin i.e. breaks down glycogen to form glucose. Doing so raises blood glucose concentration. A useful phrase you can use to remember this is when all the glucose has gone, we need glucagon. The response of the pancreas in this way is an example of what is known as a negative feedback cycle. This describes the fact that whenever blood glucose concentration rises, a physiological response is created to lower it but if low, a response is created to increase it. This phenomenon is evident in many homeostatic balances, as we will see in this video. However, this feedback mechanism can fail, causing serious consequences. Failure of glucose regulation can lead to a condition known as diabetes. It is characterized by consistently elevated blood glucose, resulting in damage to the eyes, kidneys and feet it can be classified as type 1 or type 2. Type 1 diabetes is seen mostly in younger patients. In this disease, there is autoimmune destruction of the beta cells, resulting in a shortage of insulin. As a result, blood glucose levels rise to uncontrollably high levels. The treatment includes injections of insulin. Type 2 diabetes is seen mostly in older patients, however, in recent years has been appearing in younger patients too. In this disease, there is resistance to insulin, so receptors no longer respond to the insulin present. Just like with type 1, the result is uncontrollably high blood glucose levels. The difference here is that patients have enough insulin, it just doesn't work. Type 2 diabetes is especially associated with a lack of exercise and diet consisting of sugary and high-fat foods. The treatment therefore includes increasing exercise and limiting large meals, or those in high sugar and fat. Now that you understand the two types of diabetes, we can explore a common question on this content. Distinguish between type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Diabetes is a disorder in the regulation of glucose levels. In type 1, there is a deficiency of insulin, whereas in type 2, there is a resistance to insulin. In type 1, this results from the destruction of beta cells in the pancreas, whereas in type 2, it is caused by changes to insulin receptors. Type 1 is typically seen in younger people, linked to genetics, whereas type 2 is seen in older people, linked to an unhealthy diet and lack of exercise. Additionally, type 1 can be treated with insulin, whereas type 2 is treated with diet and lifestyle modification. For your IB biology exam, you must be confident distinguishing the types of diabetes, 
so spend some time revising it. Along with glucose, our body must also balance its metabolic rate. This is done by thyroxin. Thyroxin is a hormone secreted by the thyroid gland, found in the midline of the neck. It binds to most cells in the body, such as the liver, muscle and brain cells, to regulate metabolism, i.e. respiration. As covered previously, respiration produces heat as a waste product, so the thyroid therefore has an influence on our body temperature. For example, if you become cold, the thyroid secretes more thyroxine, increasing metabolism and so raising body temperature. This is therefore another negative feedback cycle. However, just like glucose, this cycle can be disturbed. A molecule of thyroxine contains four iodine atoms, so a diet lacking iodine can result in low levels of thyroxine. This is known as hypothyroidism. And whilst you don't need this name for your exam, you must recognise the symptoms of this disease. Feeling cold, tired, depressed, constipated, and experiencing weight gain despite a loss in appetite. Whilst a dysfunctional thyroid can cause changes to your appetite, the main regulation of your appetite is conducted by another hormone known as leptin. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.